This is part six of the Creed 7B Mark I teleprinter restoration series. Uh, in this video we'll be looking at this unit. Uh, as I said in the previous video, as far as I'm concerned, this is by far the most interesting part of the entire machine. It's an incredibly clever piece of engineering and it performs a lot of tasks. It's the central part of the teleprinter and it generates all the uh, control operations for all the various parts on the machine. It also decodes the incoming stream of pulses that are fed to the solenoid to create a decoded version of the binary value that is sent to the teleprinter. So in a minute I'll show how this fits into the parts we've already looked at well, I'll just quickly explain how this unit works, or at least parts of it. There are certain aspects of this I'll come back to in future videos because it does perform quite a few different tasks. The first thing to bear in mind with high-speed mechanical machines is that the movements required to perform the operations have to be fairly small, so a lot of the adjustments are quite fine. Now, it's taken me quite a while to get this unit working. It was seized up. I couldn't rotate the cam assembly, and also I think the machine had been rotated um, before I got it because certain parts were bent or a long way out of adjustment. So I've had to adjust this entire mechanism. I don't think anybody's moved it. I think it's just a case of it was distorted by being turned when certain parts were frozen. I managed to readjust it and get it working uh, to a certain degree. I'll have to fully test it once it's uh, reinstalled in the machine. But the, the way it operates is there is a uh, shaft under here, it's hard to see, but it's uh, a camshaft and it has a series of cam slots in it. And it also has a ratchet system that's used to pause the operation of the machine based on the input from the solenoid. So the solenoid is connected to the end of this lever. So if I pull and push this lever, you'll see this shaft rocking up and down. It doesn't move very far, moving it far further than it normally would. And the way this works is as the solenoid receives a one, it pulls this it, sorry, it pushes this lever forward, so it'll push this lever in this direction, and that causes this thin plate to rise. And in rising it lines it up with this small pin. When the solenoid moves the other way, it pulls this down and then this flat plate is below this pin. And we'll see why that's important in a few minutes, but if you recall from the previous video, there were five levers on the character selector drum that were used to select which particular character was being printed based on whether they were raised or lowered. That's where this unit comes in. These five pins here are used to determine the position of the levers on the selector drum. And I'll just quickly run through one cycle so you can see how this actually operates and I'll come back and explain it in more detail but it's easier to see how it operates when it's running rather than me don't try to just explain it because it is quite easy to see what it does but it's quite difficult to explain. As I said this unit does provide quite a few more control elements rather than just this so we ignore the others for now and I'll explain those in future videos when we look at the units that they control. But this this uh, gear is constantly driven by the main motor and as you can see as it turns it drives this camshaft around and there are slots in this camshaft that determine when certain functions happen so it times everything. The only thing that's difficult to explain and visualize with the machine is that it's running at fairly high speed so it has to perform some of the mechanical operations kind of out of step or what appears to be out of step but I'll come back to that in a few uh, videos just for now bear in mind that the timing may appear to be incorrect for certain operations but you'll see why that is in, in later videos um, so for example it will appear to select the digits at the wrong time relative to when it's operating the print hammer but you'll see how that works later. So as the cam rotates then what it does is it causes this shaft to move back and forth 
So if we just concentrate on this particular shaft for now, you'll see that as I rotate this gear, this just moves back and forth. The important thing to remember is it's moving back and forth uh, at a certain part of the overall machine operation. Now because this is not in the machine, there are certain other parts that aren't present, so I will need to keep clearing certain parts, otherwise it will stop rotating. So ignore what I'm doing with this for now. Um, I'll explain what this is uh, for later. So the machine starts its selection cycle here. I'll just go back, I've missed it slightly. So the machine starts its selection cycle here. And at this point, it's receiving the first bit, or the first data bit, um, from the sending machine. That's the, what the incoming signal is sending the first bit in the character that it wants to print. And then the solenoid decides on what the position of this plate will be, whether it's going to be uh, in line with this pin, or if it's going to be below the pin. I'll leave it below the pin, and you'll see that one of the operations of this cam is to rock this lever, so it's going to rock forward. And it's going to try and push this pin, but if it's below the pin, it's going to miss the pin, and obviously it's not going to push the pin through. So in this case, it's going to miss the pin. You see it slides underneath, so it hasn't moved the pin. So let's assume that the next bit is going to be a 1. So if it's a 1, then the solenoid will be punched, or sorry, will be uh, energised. That will cause the lever to move up in line with the pin. And then when the cam comes around again, it's going to push the uh, pin through. So you can see now that it's pushing this pin through the shaft. It's encroaching on this lever, and you'll see that this lever will be pushed across. So it's set this lever in the 1 position. So, so far we have a 0 and a 1. Let's assume that we also want a 1 for the next position, so the solenoid will now, will now be de-energised, and so this lever drops back down, and then the next pulse comes through, and once again the solenoid is energised, and as the pin moves across, it pushes the second lever into the 1 position and then let's assume that the remaining bits are all zeros. So the solenoid will be de-energised, this lever will drop back down but this time because it's receiving zeros rather than ones it will stay down for each of the remaining bits and you can see that because it's missing the pin the pin is not being pushed through and so it's not setting these two levers, it's leaving them in the zero position. So it will get to the end it. So we've set a 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. These will now be raised. There's another um, cam that's or cam slot that will cause these pins to all raise at the same time through this lever rocker mechanism underneath. So there's a rocker here, it pivots in this position and it's driven by this slot of the cam. And at this position in the cycle, it causes this lever to rock. You'll see, you can see it's starting to come up, and it's pushing these pins up all at the same time. In the meantime, this is returning to its home position. It's done its job for this cycle. It will just be reset. But in the meantime, these pins come up, and they would normally, of course, be pushing up the five levers on the selector drum. So in other words, on the selector drum, we've just put the levers in the zero one one zero zero position and then when the selector drum rotates it will stop in that position and select that particular character so that comes now back to what this is for so now it's selected those um, bits another cam operates this lever in another slot of the cam and that is what drives the hammer to punch the character onto the paper. And again I'll hook this up in, the, in a minute with the other bits. There's also another part of the mechanism that causes this lever to now clear. These have done their jobs, so these now need resetting to zero already for the next character. So we're still in the same machine cycle but we're now getting towards the end of it. 
and you can see as I rotate the gear these are reset to zero. At this point this lever would normally hit an adjuster and it causes this to disengage and then the cycle finishes. So we're now at the beginning of the, the cycle for the next character and it would just go through and do exactly the same thing again and it would select digits based on the pulsing of the solenoid. It gets it into the uh, cycle, select those uh, bits on the selector drum, the hammer will be impacted onto the paper, the zero lever comes back, resets and it just keeps cycling round and what's happening here of course is at quite high speed the solenoid is operating this lever to determine whether it's going to set a, a zero or a one. Uh, this does quite a few other things but I'll come back to the other operations as I fit the other modules. What I'll do for the rest of this video is just arrange this uh, with the selector drum and the print head so you can see how they work together to select the particular character. Okay, so I have the three major components arranged as they would be if they were installed in the machine. Uh, this will allow me to demonstrate the way that they interact and the way that the control unit actually uses the selector drum to select a particular character. Now it's not going to work properly as it is here because there's quite large forces between the various parts so they will move around but it will still let me demonstrate how the control unit uses the selector drum to select a particular character. The thing to bear in mind is that these are all being driven from the same motor so they, they all rotate continuously and the mechanism is used in a uh, critically timed manner to perform the various tasks and in th these actually um, occur at a relatively high rate considering this is a, a mechanical machine. So the first thing to bear in mind is that uh, what we're doing here is effectively feeding a series of zeros and ones into this mechanism uh, through this linkage. So this is normally connected to the solenoid. The solenoid receives um, zeros and one pulses from the sending machine and that determines whether uh, the particular part of the cycle when the pulse occurs it's going to see a zero or a one. There are five bits or five data bits per cycle and then we have the usual uh, start stop bits uh, that you're probably familiar with in normal serial communications and bear in mind this is really akin to a uh, serial communications system and it works in a very similar way except it uses a mechanical uh, decoder and encoder rather than electronic. So earlier on I showed that the control unit operates by turning this gear that in turn turns this cam and that causes this rod, this lever to move back and forth. That carries the uh, digit selector pin and as this unit rotates depending on the position of the solenoid then I, this plate here will either be below this pin in which case it will miss it or it will be in line with the pin in which case it will push it through. If it pushes it through it pushes these select pins across. So if I just demonstrate the cycle, if we start off the first bit will be zero because the lever is missing the pin and then the next bit let's assume that's going to be a one so the solenoid is energized and the pin is pushed through and you can see that it operates the pin so it's pushed this pin across then moves on to the next bit, so it pushes them across, we'll do another one and then we'll finish with a zero so the solenoid is de-energized and this time again the lever misses the pin so it leaves this pin in the zero position so in this case we've selected zero zero one one zero the next part of the cam cycle is going to raise these five pins. Now, this isn't going to work because it's going to push this out of the way but it will give you an idea that normally what would happen is the pins that have been left to the left as we look at it uh, are going to miss these levers so they will leave them in the down or zero position. The pins that have been pushed across are going to hit the pins and raise them and put them in the one position. So in other words it's going to put these levers in the 
zero, zero, one, one, zero positions. And in the meantime, this will now cycle back to its start position. So you can see that these pins are coming up. At the same time, what's happening at the rear end is this lever has uh, been held across to release all these levers. So it's taking all the, the force off these uh, sprung levers to allow these to move. So you can see, you can see it's moving because it's not bolted down, but what would normally happen is these would raise and that would in turn cause the respective lever to drop down. So this has now selected the code that we want in the drum and because this is being driven continuously by the motor as well it would get to the point in the cycle where it's going to hit so as it's done here it's going to hit the um, the lever that's been selected by the position of these which was in turn selected by these which was in turn selected by this series of zeros and ones that the machine received so in other words what it's done so far is turn the incoming zeros and ones into a request for a particular character so the motor has driven that character into position the clutch in here will now slip while it prints the character As if you recall there's a clutch in here that will allow the motor to continue turning but the drum itself will stop so the drum has stopped in the position of the character that we want to print this would normally be sitting on this pin I've taken it off so you can see these but this would normally be sitting on here and at this point in the cycle this um, lever is going to move back and it's going to pull this and that will cause the hammer to push the pin and impact the paper through the ribbon and print the character so I'll complete the cycle this will now just rewind back to the beginning these will drop back down so you can see these are going back down again this is going back to the home position and at the same time this lever which has a hook behind it it's probably very hard to see is going to pull all these back into their uh, home positions and then the process starts again there are several other things going on here one is that this lever that I was releasing manually previously is now being released automatically and there's an adjusting lever also adjusting screw down here that you probably can't see but that's used to adjust the point at which this lever disengages uh, so there are quite a few adjustments that are fairly subtle but uh, once you examine the machine and see how it all operates then it becomes clear what's going on I'll describe this in a bit more detail once it's uh, screwed back into the machine so that uh, I can actually operate it uh, properly and show that it's running through a full cycle um, but that's it for this video if you want me to go over any more of this in more detail then please uh, drop a comment um, the next video I'll be um, repainting the base I'll then get these three components bolted back into the base and I will show these operating um, uh, more completely so you can see more clearly exactly how they work.